Hey guys, today we're going to talk about some ideas and concepts that you should maybe think about before you buy a Blue Tongue Skink. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and Blue Tongue Skink breeder. And you're watching Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive-bred, and animal-focused. All right, guys, first and foremost, pretty obvious, before you buy, do a little bit of research. Before you buy, you wanna increase your knowledge as best as you can to be informed, because making an informed decision is a more powerful, concrete, and beneficial decision as, if, as opposed to making an uninformed decision. That happens in anything that you do in life, especially when you're dealing with a living creature that could potentially live up to 30 years in captivity, and its entire life and welfare depends on you. So, how do we be informed? Well, there's three real things that should be mostly informed on. One is, what, what are you buying? Do you know what species of animal you're buying? Do you know how to care for that animal that you are buying? So understanding the genus of Taliqua, understanding specifically the differences between a Northern or an Indonesian, what an Australian blue tongue skink may need, what individual ind Australian blue tongue skinks differ from each other, knowing what the Indonesian and the non-Australian blue tongue skinks may need and the differences in behavior and personality. These things can be researched easily through forums and online as well as um, looking into care sheets that are available both in books and online. So understanding what you're buying. The second thing is understanding the implications of the origin of what you're buying. And the origin being, is it captive born and bred, meaning the parents were in captivity when they copulated, the mother became pregnant and then gave birth. So basically they come from a breeder. So is it CBB or are they captive born, meaning the mother was collected from the wild while she was pregnant and gave birth in captivity? Are they farm raised, which has a wide variety of ideas behind it, everything from uh, someone actually just collecting it off their private ranch or their private property and calling it a farm and therefore it's farm raised all the way to nearly captive born and bred from a facility in the native country and then later imported. There is a wide variety of captive or farm raised and so when you do a farm raised animal or you purchase an animal that's labeled as farm raised there's some questions that you need to ask uh, that are follow up to that person that is selling the animal. And then also the implications of wild collected animals, understanding what that means. If you're buying captive born, or farm raised, or wild collected, there's a high likelihood that the animal is going to need some time acclimating, and even more likelihood that the animal might have parasites. Wild collected animals are probably 99% gonna have parasites, and they're gonna have stress. Understanding the origin of the animal is essential because there are some significant implications to it. That means some things that you're going to have to do on the backhand of purchasing it to make sure that the animal succeeds in captivity and that they thrive in your care. And last but not least, understanding the origin, yes, but then actually the breeder, the seller, the vendor the importer because that actually has some further on implications of what you can buy and what that means for resale, what that means for validity of the animal's origin, that what that means for aftercare of the animal once you've purchased it. If you get them from a reputable breeder, the chances of it being represented accurately are high. The chances of it being healthy are high. The chances of you having success are high. If you buy it from a vendor who doesn't know anything about blue tongues, it's kind of up in the air. If you buy them from an importer who also deals in hybrids, the chances of it being pure are unknown. The chances of it being ill are higher than if it were captive born and bred. Doesn't mean that all vendors or all importers are 
evil or bad or anything of that nature. But understanding that is an, an, a paramount thing to before you buy. So guys, say you're gonna buy a car and the seller says that there's gonna be some work that needs done on the car. Chances are high that the more you know going into the sale and before the sale about that type of car, about what type of parts that car may need, of what type of problems that car may have in that brand or that model, knowing all of that going in will make you a more informed decision when you decide to buy from the guy that says it's gonna need care. Because what if you buy the car, you don't even know what kind of car it is, how are you gonna go buy parts for it to take care of the car if you don't even know what kind of car it is? That would not be very wise. People do that with reptiles. <laughs> I've done that with reptiles in uh, my early days where I've just like, I gotta buy something at the expo or I will explode. <laughs> I'll literally, I'll buy something and then I'll go home and I'll Google what the heck did I just buy? Ideally, that's not the most responsible thing to do. I get it, I've done it. I'm not trying to knock on anyone who's doing that. It would be better if we knew what kind of parts, what kind of things we needed, at least what kind of car we have before we buy it because there's always follow-on care with a living animal. When we buy living creatures, there is follow-on care immediately. And so knowing ahead of time is far better than figuring out after. And also, if you really, 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 really want a Ford Mustang and all they have at the store is Chevy Camaros, please hold out for a Mustang because you're going to be much happier with what you wanted for the most part. Now, sure, if you really wanted a Mustang and then you go test drive a Camaro, you fall in love with the Camaro, you buy the Camaro and you're not settling, that's totally possible and many people do that. But I can count, I cannot count on two hands because it's way more than that. People that over and over and over again, they go to an expo hoping to buy a Northern. There's no Northerns available at the expo because those are few and far between at expos. But there was a plethora of imported other species and they pick one of those up, take it home, and then a few days later they'll email me or they'll email a fellow breeder and they'll say, hey, I really wanted a Northern, but I have this Indonesian now and I don't know really what to do with it or how to care for it. Guys, hold out for what you want. I encourage you to hold out for what you want. Those beautiful animals that, are, that you settle on deserve more than just to be settled on. They deserve more because they're amazing animals. And there are people that want those animals that maybe you purchased it and they didn't get it because they wanted that animal. So I encourage you to hold out. If you want captive born and bred, hold out and be patient. The rewards are worth it. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. I'm coming up next episode. It's going to be a Q&A. You're welcome to put Q&A questions down in the uh, the, the description there, put a parenthesis around it so and it says Q&A so that I know that it's Q&A and you don't want it answered immediately. As always, thank you for watching. You're welcome to check me out over on Patreon. Patrons, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the new patrons. You guys and your generosity are as amazing and I'm grateful for you guys. And stay tuned for future episodes. And remember, opinion is not fact.